Einbahnstrasse. Simon looked shrunken and pale. He bent over double at the waist, a hand wrapped around his stomach like he'd eaten a bad bratwurst. I immediately turned him toward the back door and helped him climb the stairs. The staff had already cleared out because of the air raid. That's why Simon had waited until then to come back to the house. I led him to the little hidden closet at the back of Da's office, signaled for him to wait, as if he could go anywhere, and ran to catch my parents before they went down into the bunker. I was so giddy I was practically hopping. I couldn't believe it. Simon was alive. I hadn't gotten him captured by the Gestapo after all. Da! Ma! I cried. The staff was with them, and everybody stopped to find out what was wrong. I panted from my run, trying to think how to tell them Simon was back without alerting the staff. That, that wine you were trying to have delivered, I said, remembering the coded conversation Ma had had with her contact on the phone. It made it after all. They left it at the back door. Da and Ma shared a startled look. I'll see to it, said Mrs. Keller, the housekeeper. No, no, Da said. I, no, I forbid any of the staff to risk their life over a case of wine, no matter how expensive it is. Get to the bunkers. Michael and I'll see to it. Mrs. Keller and the others protested, but Da sent them away. Ma gave us a hopeful look before going with the staff to make sure none of them came back. Da and I, I rushed back to the secret closet where Simon lay slumped against the bookcases. Good God, are we happy to see you, Da said. What happened? Simon told us how he'd waited at the rendezvous point for me past our waiting, un waiting time, and my ears burned hot with shame. I started to apologize, but Simon held up a hand. I heard a patrol coming, so I decided to make it on my own. I'd studied the maps. I thought I could do it. I made it halfway across the city, but at some point I must have made a wrong turn. I was supposed to be on Friedrichstrasse, but instead I somehow ended up on Einbahnstrasse. I doubled back trying to find Friedrichstrasse, and that's when they spotted me. Da and I glanced at each other, and I wondered which of us was going to be the first to tell him. What? Simon asked. That probably was Friedrichstrasse, Da told him. No, I'm telling you, the sign said Einbahnstrasse. Einbahnstrasse means one-way street, I explained. That was Friedrichstrasse. You just saw the sign that said it was one way, not the sign with the street name on it. Simon closed his eyes and thunked his head back against the bookshelves. Well, I suppose I should have learned a little more German while I was holed up here, shouldn't I? Simon told us a Hitler youth patrol had spotted him, and when he didn't heed their calls, they chased him through the streets. I almost lost him, he said, but one of the boys stayed on my tail, cornered me in an alley. He couldn't have been more than ten years old. I had my pistol, but I'm afraid I didn't have it in me to shoot him. He was just a boy. He didn't have any similar reservations about using his dagger on me, though. Simon pulled his hand away from his stomach. His shirt and hand were covered with blood. Good God, why didn't you say something, Da said, and he went for the alcohol and bandages. What about the plans, I asked Simon. He pulled them out from inside his shirt. A little bloody, but still intact, I think, he said. I sighed with relief. Simon was alive, and the plans were safe. His ship may have sailed, but Ma could arrange another one in time. Da came back with the medical kit. Bombs began to fall outside, shaking the books on the shelves. Ah, Simon said as Da bandaged him. They're playing my song. I have to get to the bunker, or someone from the staff will come looking for me, Da said. I'll be fine with Michael, Simon replied. I can talk him through patching me up. We're glad you're still alive, Da said, shaking Simon's hand. So am I, as it happens, said Simon. Da left, and Simon peeled back his torn and bloody shirt. I paled. Simon, I'm so sorry, I told him. Tears sprang to my eyes. I should have been there. I shouldn't have... Simon put up a hand. I've never once been part of a covert action that went according to plan, he said. He waved his hand to encompass himself and the little closet he was hidden in. Case in point, how I got here in the first place. I'm sure you would have been there if you could. Simon showed me how to clean his wound, which he bore with gritted teeth. 
We figured out who's going to be assassinated, I said, to distract him. I told him all about Goldsmith and the science conference, Fritz, and the so-called science team. It's your little friend who's going to be doing the assassination, Simon said. I nodded. And there's no time to get word back to London. The conference is in two days. Which means you've got to get on that science team, Simon said. You have to go to Switzerland and stop it yourself.